plunking my butt down at a picnic table on the beach sounds like a damn good way to start today's video. This isn't going to be a very eventful video as I'm kind of stuck here. <laughs> Could be worse places in the world to be stuck, but I'm actually, for real, stuck here at the beach. I woke up this morning just over there, drove uptown, grabbed myself a coffee, and it was so hard to go get a coffee because there were barricades blocking every street and the coffee shop was here but I was on this side of the main street and I couldn't get over there because there was all these fences blocking anybody getting to the main road and I'm like what is happening so I kept driving I kept driving I kept driving and finally way up I found a way to sneak back over and get back to the other side of the road to get to where all the businesses and coffee shops were Okay, this is five o'clock in the morning and I'm like, what is going on that all these fences appeared overnight? So I get to the coffee shop and I Google Penticton, BC, and I find out there's a big bike race on today, so I can't even get across. Anyway, I grab my coffee, I come back down to the beach, I pull into a parking lot because there was no fences down this far. Well, they hadn't gone that far yet. So the parking lot that I'm in, <sighs> Chrome, this is getting to be a long story. So the parking lot that I'm in is now barricaded. You can't get in, nor can you get out. So me and Cruz, we're kind of stuck right here today. Boy, this is gonna suck. Ugh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Penticton, BC, this is Skaha Lake. Since the very beginning of this channel, I've shared with you my everyday experiences in this lifestyle. Everything from my point of view, because that's the only point of view I have is my own. So I've been sharing you my thoughts, my feelings, my opinions, my experiences, everything. Well, recently I've had the chance to see the beginning side of van life from somebody else's point of view, and it's really opened my eyes up to some of the struggles that you guys might be having that were totally different than me. I've had no problems in this lifestyle. Bathrooms everywhere. Got one in my van if I need to take a pee in a bottle, done. I got one in my van if I need to take a poop in a bucket, done. Parking, never had a problem, never had a knock on the van that wasn't a mistake. I had one knock on my van once and he, there's a gentleman looking for a girl that lives in a van just like mine. Nothing negative, nothing at all. I've had no problems with all the basics and fundamentals of van life. Things have flowed so smoothly and so freely for me. So that's the only experiences that I can give you is the simpleness and the easiness of everything in this lifestyle. I think anything that goes on in this is created in here. I always keep telling you guys, it's the battle of the barriers that goes on in your brain that makes things so tough for you in life, that makes things so tough for people to succeed because something in here keeps them pushed down. It's like parking somewhere. Your mind always keeps thinking, somebody's watching me, somebody's watching me, somebody's seen me get in my van. It's in here, not a reality. It's made up inside of your brain, which keeps you from progressing forward, keeps you from being happy, keeps you from doing things that you want to do because this brain of yours, something you've done in there has made it, just put a block on it, and now you can't do squat. So find a way to clean out those barriers. And I wanna to talk to you guys about about this gentleman I know that just moved into a minivan. I don't know how to get this across, so I'm just gonna tell you some of the things that they've said to me over this past month that he's been in the van. Um, he's been paying for camping just about 95% of his van life already, every single night. They messaged me today and was like, hey Chrome, I just finished staying at a place for an entire week that I got a smoking good deal on. $130 to camp out there for a week. My instant thought was, what are you doing paying for parking? Why are you continually paying for parking? I get and I understand a couple nights at the campsite just to get into the whole vibe of things. I get it, I understand it. But when it's been like a month long and they're still rocking the campsites, paying like $25, $30 a night just to sleep, I think is freaking crazy that's the thing about this life is that you don't have to pay to fall asleep at night anymore 
You know, you, you can get the same thing from the side of any street or a pull off on the side of the road somewhere by a lake or where I stayed in front of an apartment building last night or at a rest area just on the highway. Wherever you're planning on sleeping is free. You don't have to pay for campsites on a continual. Here's some of the struggles he told me he's been having. It's the bathroom. And he has a full blown RV toilet. The one that you push the button and it flushes and it goes into a little basin that you gotta dump later on. What he's been doing is he's been using the toilet, then getting out of the van, going to dump it right away. If you're gonna put a toilet in your van, use it for what it's meant to be, a toilet in your home. Go dump it the next day after you've gotten a good night's sleep. Sure, get up, go to the bathroom, shut the lid, flush it, whatever, and go back to bed. There's no need to have a toilet in your van and then sleep by a bathroom and pay for parking just for that reason. That doesn't make sense. And even they've said they've even parked a couple of nights in front of like a 24 hour McDonald's so they can go in and dump the toilet in the middle of the night. You don't need to. And this is where I'm learning some of the struggles that go on in people's minds where something in the mind clicked and said, well, I gotta dump this right after I take a piss. You don't. Or, you know, the things in the people's minds are saying, oh no, people are seeing me. I can't park in front of an apartment building. People will know. And this is showing me that not everybody sees things so simple and so easy. That sometimes even the simplest things people can make into the most complex thing in the freaking world, like using a toilet in your van. I'm making this video because I know that there's other people out there that are just like him and struggling with these exact same things. And he said to me a few times, well, it's I'm having a hard time because my van is small. And these are things that I'm learning that people just don't wrap their heads around. Let me break this down for you very simple. Never ever eat where you sleep. Don't open your van doors up and fully make a sprawl out and make some food and have everybody see you functioning at home in the place that you plan on calling home that night to sleep. If you're gonna sit down and make breakfast or make dinner, let's break it down for you very simple. You wake up in the morning from where you slept, you leave, period. No questions asked, nothing else. You get up, you get in the front, you start your van, you move. You come to a beautiful park like this, you open up your van doors, you shake out your carpets, whatever you need to do, and you make yourself at home just like I did here today. You make your coffee, you make your breakfast, you find a picnic table to sit on if you want to, if it's not raining outside, and you enjoy your new home right here in a place you've never seen. You don't do that in the place you sleep. Okay, I'm a city van dweller. You gotta remember, I'm talking to you guys from this in a perspective of living in a town or a city, not living in a desert or in the back country, because you can do all that stuff in one spot. But in the city, you need to move. So get up in the morning, find a place, have yourself some breakfast, and go about your day. Then find a park, maybe you're at this park all day long, I don't know. And if you're at this park all day long, or if you found yourself at a park at the other side of town, you make yourself some dinner, you do your dishes, you clean up, you go grab a quick bathroom at the park because you're there anyway, or wherever you are, hanging out in a parking lot all day, I don't know. Um, and then you go to the washroom, you get that out of the way. Then you go find a place to park and sleep that night. But you pull up to that place when it's ready for bed, period. Don't go there and hang out for five, six, seven hours, unless you're gonna watch movies, that's fine. But pull up when you know you're never gonna exit your van. So you pull up to the apartment building or the lakeside or wherever you are. You pull up at night, you crawl in the back, and that's it. Nobody else sees any more movement in your van. And I'm guessing at this point, you have some sort of a blackout curtain around the back so nobody can see what's going on inside. And you, you be quiet in the van. You don't make noise. You don't get in and out of it all the time because that's where your problems are gonna come in. Your problems are gonna come in because a neighbor sees you rustling around in the van that's like, I don't want this person in front of my home. I'm creeped out. Like he said to me once, he's like, well, I, you know, I don't wanna do the apartment buildings because I, you know, I have to have dinner at night. That's why you live your life away from the places you sleep. Use your parking spot at night for one purpose. One, sleep and get out, period. Don't let the world see you living in the place that you sleep because that might wreck you ever using that spot again down the line, especially if you're in front of like residential or his apartment buildings or anything like that. 
remember, this stuff is a little different if you're by a lake in the woods. <laughs> then nothing matters. You can live your life how you want to live it. That's it. Just obey parking signs. He told me once that he asked a park guy that was doing some maintenance work at a park that like, hey, is it okay if I have lunch here? So I guess he had the van doors open and was preparing food outside. And I guess he felt awkward about it. Awkward enough to the point that he asked the guy at the park that was doing like garbage cleanup or whatever this person was doing. Um, asked us, hey, is it okay if I do this stuff here? So if you're ever wondering, can you pull up at a park and pull out your whole kitchen on tables outside if you want? Absolutely. freaking lutely You're a traveler and you're allowed to use the park no different than anybody else. And you can do it without the care or judgment of those around you. Sure, people might take a look over with a little bit of a weird look because you are living in your vehicle and that's like a foreign thing to some people. But you gotta understand that people are curious. And if anything, they might walk over and be like, are you really living in that little van? You'd be like, yeah, I am, I'm having a blast. You know, you take their curiosity and they're like, is this person living in their vehicle? And showing them how epic this lifestyle is. Because some people don't understand and they don't get it. And then they will look at you kind of funny. But that's your opportunity if they come over to you to show them that this lifestyle is awesome, that you're in it by choice and how much fun you're having in the places you just finished traveling over the last week and people are like, whoa, this is cool. Where people are expecting them to come over and be like, excuse me, are you living in here? And you know, they're expecting a hobo in the van. I shouldn't say hobo, but um, hobo means something totally different. I thought a hobo was like a bum, but apparently a hobo is me. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, you're gonna always get those kind of people. You're always gonna get the looks. You just can't give a shit what anybody else thinks. Why? Because you're having fun and they're not. They're stressed out, they're grumpy, they're crabby, they're bitchy, they're stuck in a life circle that just doesn't seem to end. Every day seems to start the same, every day seems to end the same, and the same stress and BS is always in the middle. Where people that are living lifestyles like us, we found a way to remove a major chunk of that stress. So our lives already become a lot less stressful and more happy and more fun. I'm not saying that people live in houses are all that way, but for a majority, 99% of the people that I have ever met are not happy with the life that they're living. They're always complaining or whining or bitching about something where I have nothing to complain, bitch or whine about because my life is freaking epic. I just removed the major piece of stress in my world and started to live, live life for me. I know this is turning out to be a bit of a babble. I know we're running on a little long, but you know, I, I just want you guys to know that this life is not as hard as you make it. And if there is any problems, the problems are created right here. It is your doing, your problem. It's not like, because I see videos online where people are like, oh my God, this sucked about van life, this sucked about van life, this sucked about van life. And they're saying th things that are so specific to their mindset that it's kind of, it makes things harder for other people. Maybe it's because I live in Canada. Maybe that's what it is. Everybody's way too friendly, including our bears are friendly. <laughs> I'm getting off track now. Anyway. I don't know what I wanted to say in this video. All that's on my mind right now is stop talking Chrome because this is going to be a super long one. I just wanted to share you some of the struggles that he has been having um, just to show you guys that you don't need to struggle about these things. I'm starting to ramble. <laughs> Weird fact, talking videos are the worst to edit. True that, the worst because I gotta go through the video and make sure I haven't repeated things that I say because I repeat a lot of things that I say and cut it up so it's kind of like, it all made sense. Because I know when I sit here and talk in these situations, I babble a freaking lot and then, ah, uh, see, here I go again. Okay, bye. You make it real.